away with the family up the bush is always special but probably more so in this instance when the world was in the grips of a pandemic homeschooling working from home border closures lockdowns they were all becoming the new norm so when we had the opportunity to get up onto the Murray River into the Barmer Forest and boil the billy and have a cup of tea, cook a few snags on the fire, we jumped at that opportunity. So while sitting in the shade of these majestic river red gums, watching the river just flow on by, my mind wandered, wandered back to an idea that I'd held for many years the opportunity to explore this fantastic river was something that I had keenly desired but never pursued. Maybe, just maybe, it was time. Bloody wild weather. Oh, there you go. There. Probably not the last last water it's going to see in there, I suspect. That'll help. Shame about all that packaging. It's probably had to travel a fair way interstate, probably overseas actually. I suspect it's come from uh, the other side of the world, from Bay Sports Expedition to Touring Kayak. We've got big things planned. This is exciting. This is really exciting. Got no idea, I've never done any of this sort of stuff before. In fact, there'll be a lot of test drives. It's exciting. Very, very exciting. Well, I hope it is. I don't know anything about these things. We better take it for a spin. So the maiden voyage of my new craft highlighted a few deficiencies. I had to acknowledge that I actually didn't have a clue what I was doing. I started off in those early days holding the paddle the wrong way, trying to overcome a lifelong debilitation with motion sickness. And for a bloke that gets crook in the bath, I have a long way to go. But you've got to start somewhere, and today was the day. What did become obvious was the fact that I lived opposite a brilliant lake that provided fantastic opportunity to regularly get out and practice, clock up the miles, learn the craft, learn my limitations, learn. The 
there we have it. Maiden voyage. Pretty exciting. Got a long way to go. <laughs> In more ways than one. Got to start somewhere. Today's the day. So this is my first multi-hour paddle. Been going for an hour and a half so far. Just stopped back there for a cup and a leak actually. Eight, nearly eight and a half k so far. So pretty happy with that. So what I'm trying to do here is circumnavigate the lake just as a bit of a practice, get some uh, hours under me belt, just this persistent sort of drizzle, beautiful day, calm as can be, a couple of wood ducks just right here in front of me, it's, uh, of course there's no one around, everyone's confined to barracks, 
So it's meant to be a few storms later on today, so hopefully I'll be off the water by then. I expect to be sort of wound up by a bit after lunchtime. So yeah, plan on doing a lap around the lake. And uh, that should be about 17k, so I'm about halfway. Eight and a half, yes. That's 17k's by my estimate. Home is, yep, completely opposite side of the lake to where we are now. So I've done half. I've got to go across the the weir. I'm not sure if there'll be any sort of flow there'll be going when I go across there. That'll be exciting. Something I've never done before. Anyway, chipping away, having a ball. We'll push on. See what we can see. It's just like glass. Looks like the whole lake is too. I don't think it's just because I'm in the lee of the point here. I think the whole lake is. It's just died right off. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. Well, it's always a good day when we've got the machines out because that means that we've got something exciting planned. Now I've got a couple of sewing machines set up there on the benches and uh, a few little projects I need to bring together. One of them is on this uh, kayak here. Got a mount, a couple of things, a collapsible trolley. There's wheels going there. I also need to be able to carry a little power pack charged by a solar panel. It's only a little panel, but be out in the sun all the time, so well, provided it's sunny. Because I can't get into the hatch easily, I don't want to be bumming around. So I'm thinking of then having the whole lot clip into these ropes on the point side there, the anchor points, and then the whole lot unclip and just fold out of the way, access the hatch, fold it back down, clip this side back on. And why wouldn't that work? I might find out. I'm going to make a bit of a bag accommodate all of that. I want to make a hatch cover to go over here, basically to seal this up when I'm not in the boat so and the uh, you know, in camp and security as well. I can put my gear in there if I have to leave camp. I could probably buy them, I couldn't see any actually. I 
obviously get the ones that you you wear and they seal around but it's still a big hole in them. Now, a couple of things I want to do for the kayak trip is um, have some lightweight but durable bags that I can throw all my camping gear in. A bag maybe for each hatch, two bags. Um, so when I pack up my gear, I can throw, throw it all in there, carry it to the boat, which could be some distance away, and then pack the boat, and vice versa. When I get to camp or pull up, I can unpack the hatches and throw it in there, and um, carry it up to my campsite rather than individual pieces. So I had this one laying around. There's actually a a sample waterproof or seems to be a big dry bag. Not that I need a dry bag for this job, but it's a big dry bag that was made years ago as a um, on spec as a sample for the military. And I've got some other bits and bits, a big stack of these old pieces here. Good, not much good for any of them really, but they're all cut out for a job many years ago. And um, they're actually industrial laundry bags. I had them, had them laying there, never throw any of them out, you know. It takes me a couple of minutes to sew them up and uh, turn it into a nice big bag. <laughs> And I've, I've got it to where it's going to be functional, it's going to do the things, everything that I need it to do, that's the way I haven't got too much sort of, you can get hooked on things, of course everything does affect the balance, unclip two buckles there, I just pop them over there, I'll put it so it's re retained there so I can't pop over into the mud and everything. Access the hatch. Hello. I'll make sure it's just got the camping gear in it, and then the thing that I need readily accessible can go in the front hatch. Decisions, decisions. Obviously, drilling holes in the boat is a little bit feels a bit precarious. I don't know. Here goes nothing. Just mounted the, uh, the camera on the boat, so I can uh, swing it around. Yep, I think that 
that'll do. Oh, I think from a kayak preparation point of view, I think I've done everything. Trolley and wheels secured. I've got my solar and power supply secured. The raincoat so I can easily reach that. The deck sponge just under there. What have I forgotten? I'm sure I'll find something. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. It's going to be a bit weighty. 70 kilo. It's pretty heavy. I can't lift it on my own, that's for sure. I've been thinking the whole time while I'm doing this preparation. Can you over prepare? Is it possible to do too much preparation? Overthink it? Not sure. So I'm about to embark on something that I've never done before in terms of the activity. It's a kayaking trip. I'm not a kayaker, never have been. About to head off doing something that I probably know very little about. So am I overthinking it? Probably. Is that something that bothers me? I'm not sure. I'm gonna be on my own. I've got a responsibility to myself and to others to get it right, to come home. But in saying all of that, the preparation and the planning and the, the thinking about it all, is actually part of the journey. I'm going to be on a paddle for two months on the water, but it's been a 12 month journey. I don't want to procrastinate about it too much. I'm going to paddle best part of 2,400 kilometers. That's massive. So, you know, I want to do as much as I can to make it as easy as possible. <laughs> I don't know enough about what I'm doing to know what's going to go wrong, you know, whether it's bushwalking, skiing, mountaineering, caving, four-wheel driving, touring, you know, you learn little bits along the way. Am I ready? <laughs> Who knows?